Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. If you visit the parks in Milton, you'll learn that the town bears the distinction of having five United States governors who once called it home, four serving right here in the state of Delaware. On Magnolia Street is a lovely pathway dedicated to them called Governor's Walk, which connects Milton's Memorial Park with Wagaman's Pond. The first governor from Milton was Samuel Painter, who was born in 1768 at a homestead called Drawbridge. This property is just about where today's Route 1 crosses the Broadkill River. Samuel was a prosperous farmer and merchant. Capitalizing on his father's general store, he built a mill. Its success led him to be appointed as a director of the Farmers Bank in Georgetown. He had a good reputation among his neighbors, and so he was elected to the Delaware House of Representatives, serving four sessions, and then a total of eight sessions in the state Senate. He also served as a local judge. Samuel ran for governor and was elected, serving one term from 1824 to 1827. During his time in office, work on the Chesapeake and Delaware Canal began. His opponent in that race had been a Milton neighbor, David Hazard, who was 13 years his junior. David Hazard, who was born in 1781, ran twice for governor, again after his initial feat by Samuel Painter. The third time was the charm, and he was elected to the office in 1829. During the War of 1812, he served as an ensign in the 1st Company of the 8th Regiment of the Delaware Militia. Their assignment was to defend the Port of Lewis. It must pay to have connections. While serving, he was able to live at home in Milton and keep an eye on the family mercantile business. When David was finally elected governor, he was aligned with the Henry Clay wing of the party that swept the region and won control of the legislature. He only served one term, but it was a busy one. During his tenure, public school districts were first established throughout the state, and a new state constitution was adopted in 1831. That was also the year of Nat Turner's slave rebellion. Though that had happened in Virginia, it stoked long-standing fears of something similar happening in Delaware. The unfortunate response under the authority of Governor Hazard was that legislation was enacted further restricting the civil rights of free and slave blacks alike. The next governor from Milton was Joseph Mall, who was also born in 1781 and served with his neighbor David Hazard defending Lewis during the War of 1812. Joseph was a Milton family doctor for many years. He was also a mover and shaker there, leading the call for the construction of the dam that created Wagaman's Pond. That's where he owned property and built a successful gristmill. Joseph continued his medical practice and his business, but he also found time to run for the state Senate. While serving there, he was elected as president of the Senate, which led to his most prestigious post. When Governor Thomas Stockton died in office in 1846, Joseph was next in the line of secession and therefore became the next governor. Unfortunately, he only lived a few months, also dying in office. About the only thing notable from his very short term was that he was on record as opposing the annexation of Texas. The next governor to hail from Milton was James Ponder, who was born in 1819. James was another son of a successful merchant. He served as a representative in the State House for one term prior to the Civil War. Afterwards, he was elected to the State Senate, rising to the office of Speaker in 1867. In 1870, he was elected to serve for one term as governor. During his time in office, the State House was expanded. Heat and gas lighting were installed there. His term was unfortunately marked by his opposition to progress for African Americans and their right to vote, which he tried to thwart in any way that he could. Elections held during this time were notoriously rigged to support that position, leading to federal troops being sent in by President Grant to police the next election. The last governor to call Milton his home was Joseph Carey, who was born in 1845. Like all the others, Joseph was also the son of successful local merchants. He went off to school getting a law degree from the University of Pennsylvania, passing the bar exam in 1867. Like so many other ambitious young men, he felt the pull to go west, heading to the Wyoming Territory shortly thereafter. He actively campaigned for Ulysses S. Grant when he ran for president. 
He must have impressed someone quite important because only two years later he was appointed the U.S. District Attorney for Wyoming Territory. The first elected office he held was Mayor of Cheyenne. Then he was off to our country's capital as a territorial representative. While there, he authored the bill to grant Wyoming statehood. A true progressive, legend has it that he and his delegation told Congress that Wyoming would wait 100 years for statehood rather than join without women's suffrage. After the territory became a state, Joseph was elected to the U.S. Senate, but he was unseated after just one term. He seemed to retire from politics, retreating to practice law and run his ranch in Wyoming. By this time, his holdings were quite an empire and should have kept him busy enough. The political bug got him again when he supported Teddy Roosevelt's re-election bid with the Progressive Party. It took another 16 years before he ran successfully for governor of Wyoming. Joseph Carey also bears the distinction of being inducted into the Cowboy Hall of Fame. Each of these governors has an historic marker dedicated to them in Milton and there are a number of their homes still preserved there on the National Register of Historic Places. Find out more about Milton's history at our website, delmarvaalmanac.com slash history. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters, eatdrinkbyart.com, for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune.